following video interview is part of the USMC Vietnam Tankers History Project and is, was recorded at the Vietnam Reunion, Vietnam Tankers Reunion, excuse me, in Washington, D.C. on October 30th, 2015. My name is Guy L. Everest. My unit was Alpha Company 3rd Tanks. I was in Vietnam in 1968 as a corporal. I, stuck, I ended up in Vietnam after I was caught with a collared shirt on for the second time in Oceanside. Non-collared shirt. Non-collared shirt, correction. The MPs came on the bus at 3 o'clock in the morning as I was coming back from L.A. and pulled me off, wrote me up, and sent me back to Charlie Company 5th Tanks. Well, that afternoon, Sergeant Ambezi goes, the first sergeant wants to see you. So I already knew what I was in trouble for, so I went down there and he goes, Corporal Everest, you did it again. I went, yes, first, first sergeant. He says, well, don't worry about it. Where I'm sending you, you'll never have to worry about collared shirts. And he told me, pack my gear, take some leave, and I'm heading to Westpac. And Westpac was Vietnam. In, in parlance is Vietnam. Yeah. So you went so, home and took, took leave? Took leave. In Jersey? In Jersey. And my mother was surprised because I hadn't told her I was having leave. She goes, well, you're home. Something going on? And I said, no, 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 no. So I left my orders around. She, like a mother, looked through them. She goes, what's this? Westpac. I go, everything west of California. She goes, isn't Vietnam west of California? I go, yeah, but I'm not going there. I'm probably going on a cruise or something. But she kind of figured it out. So then I got over to Vietnam, got to uh, Da Nang. From Da Nang, I went up to Phu Bai. And it was interesting being in Da Nang. Nobody told you nothing except this is where you got to go, Phu Bai. And I asked the Staff NCO, he goes, just get down to friggin' airport, you'll figure it out, go down there. So I finally figured out how to get on a C-130 that I thought was going to flew by, and flew up there. That thing, first time I flew on one, it was rattling, shaking, taking off. I thought I could walk faster than it. Got up to flew by, got to the air base there, asked somebody else, like you, FNG, nobody cares, how I find third tanks. He goes, I don't know, but there's a field phone there. So I cranked the phone. Luckily, I asked somebody and they got me through the third tanks. They said they'd send a Jeep for me. Some guy comes down in a Jeep, pulls in and goes, you're the new kid? I go, yeah. He goes, well, throw your shit in the back and see this rifle? Yeah, don't touch it. He goes, I go, what? He goes, yeah, the guys got ambushed yesterday going out there, so it's a good chance we'll get ambushed. So I'm scared as shit, but one thing I knew, I could get to the rifle before him. So then he checked in third tanks. I think that night and the next night, they put me on guard duty in a bunker. And so I get in there, and it's all guys have been in, they know I'm just brand new fish. So they go, you want first watch? And I go, oh, yeah, wow, that's, wow, they're making you have first watch. That's pretty cool. So I get up there. I got the 50. I've got fields of fire. I've got my grenades sitting up there. I've got my K-bars sitting up there. I'm ready. I'm ready. I was ready all night. Them guys slept all night. <laughs> <laughs> so then I finally got up to third tanks up in Dong Ha after a few days. And I report in about later that night or the next day, it was towards the evening, the lieutenant calls me in and he knew me from fifth tanks apparently. He says, I'm gonna make you a TC of a tank and I'm going, I just got here. I don't know the first friggin' thing about Vietnam. He says, Yeah, you get your crew and tank tomorrow. So that was how I started off in Vietnam. Because you were a corporal, right. they made you a tank commander. Right. They, didn't, they didn't make you a gunner for nope. two weeks or nope. something to, nope. just they to put me the ropes. And nope, put me right, right in and sent me right out. So I get my crew, and they were probably 
a little upset with me, you know, just coming in country. So the first day we're going, first day we're heading outside the wire, we're going to Contien. So I asked the guy, my driver, you know how to get to Contien? Yeah. So that morning we're supposed to lead a convoy. I should have looked at a map, but I relied on my driver. And we pull out, I go, where are you going? He goes, oh man, I forgot how to get to Contien. So we're kind of going down the road and I'm trying to figure it out as we go. And we get up to Contien. As we leave the washout, they're getting shelled up there. So the convoy stops. Now I'm just sitting outside the washout. The convoy said they're turning around. So I'm radioing all back and they're telling me, get my ass up to Contien. And I'm going, well, I'm not supposed to be driving around alone. Because that's what I learned. Well, finally get up to Contien, we pull in and find a spot. I said, well, we'll get, we'll get off, I'll, I'll find somebody to tell me where to go. About then they start shelling again. So we all scram back in the tank. The first friggin' round hits the ammo bunker and blows it up. <laughs> and I, I'm going to myself, oh my God, you know, we've had phony artillery, but this is the real shit if it blows up that much. I am not going to live the next week up here because I was like scared to hell. I said, God, you know, this is nothing like real life. So we finally, I find somebody, he tells me where to put my crew in tank and we spent a couple of days at Contien. So, and Alpha Company? Alpha Company, And yeah. what's your tank designation? I think it was Alpha 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. And did you have a name on the gun too? The Wanderer. The Wanderer. Did you stay with that tank? Yeah. The whole time? The whole time. And what did you do after you first got to Contien? Did you go on an operation soon? No, we stayed in this perimeter defense for a while. And who was the platoon leader, remember? I don't remember. You remember the platoon sergeant? Nope. Any of the other crew guys? And what's your crew? how about your crew? I don't remember one of them. <laughs> I'll be honest, I know one I think was from Colorado, and it wasn't you. And that's about all I remember about them. Okay, and what do you remember next happening? After that, we went down to Camlo for a while. Camlo Hill? Camlo Bridge. Bridge. Okay. That was pretty good because they had a little, you go across the bridge and you could buy booze and stuff from the Vietnamese. So. And wasn't there a shower? Wasn't yeah. there a shower at the, there, the water I point with believe the there was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because it was. The Marines have been there for quite a while. Right, and the French before them. So, right. so, so you were at Camlo Bridge on right. guard. Right. Okay, and this is in the winter. Is this De yeah. December, January? Right. This is probably February, March. So this is still monsoon season. Right. So you're not doing operations yet. Right. So, okay, so you're at Camlo Bridge for a couple months, and yeah. then, and then. I went to Dong Ha. Then I went up for, for maintenance. Probably, PM yeah. Maybe probably uh, yeah. Uh, quarterly maintenance. Probably. Okay. Went to Dung Ha. I have no <laughs> idea. It's been fifty years. And 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 that may have been the first time I saw yeah. you. Yeah. Was then. I no. I think I saw you at the washout. Oh. My memory serves right. I, met, I saw you at the washout. Yeah. You were on a flame. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought I I had no fifty. They didn't have the fifty for me. And I absconded with a 30 from somebody at the washout and cupola amounted that. I remember that. I remember yeah. That. So, okay. So then you went on a op after that? Yeah, I went up to uh, the, would be the little fire base between Contien and Jalin. A3. Is it A3? Yeah. And we went out on an operation to uh, support the Arvin. And uh, we went down to the blow Jill into this little village and we were supposed to su support them. They were supposed to fire and back us up and we got our clocks kind of cleaned. If I recall, I think the gunny got shot in the head. I got wounded and uh, the Arvin was still back there. I know the, the NCOs guys on the NCO's tank, if I recall, they had suspected it was the Arvin that shot him and not the, because they were getting hit by bullets from the armored personnel carriers behind them. And they said he just kind of dropped in and 
they swore it was the Arvin that shot him. So. So that was the first stop that you went on, right. really? Okay. And and the gun he was killed. Right. And he was in a tank. It was, it was right. one of his tanks. One of his tanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so then what happened? I got wounded. We spent the night at. No. Mm -hmm. I went to an army aid hospital in the morning. There? They took us to some, on, on the road up to Jalin, there's a ar little army aid hospital. Okay. And so they had, they sent some vehicles out to pick us up. Me and three other guys went to the aid hospital. They patched me up and I went back. Back to your tank? Back to my tank. And yeah. it was still sitting there? Yeah. Off the Route 1? Right. Okay. Then what happened? So we ended up, the Marines came up and we ended up pushing into the village along with the Arvin that morning. And that morning, uh, how do I explain this? Well, as we took the village, there were some Arvin caught a couple NVA soldiers in some uh, foxholes and started pulling out and started hacking them with entrenching tools. And my loader goes, we can't, you gotta do something. And I basically was not in the mood to do anything. Yeah. And uh, I kind of feel guilty about it now. But anyway, they started just whacking at these guys. And then finally I go, that's friggin' bullshit. And grabbed an A, my M16 and opened up, didn't hit any, just fired around them and they stopped attacking them guys. So. And that was still on the same operation? Yeah, same yeah. operation. And, and was the fire that, that killed the gunny and all that, if, if, if it had been coming in, coming, it was coming from the village? That is the 64,000. His okay. crew guys think it was the, the Arvin. My cupola, but they were throwing a lot of rounds. My cupola, as you used to duck behind it, the little, yeah. The little periscope, yeah, yeah. and you kind of yeah, hit behind yeah, it. Yeah, had so. had a bullet hole right in the center of the glass. So that could have been coming from the village. Could have been. Okay. I'm wondering if they might have had a sniper or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, my the hole was right dead center where could my face should have been. No, yeah. it would have got me right in the head where they got gotcha. the gunning. Gotcha. All right. So then the op that operation was over. Right. And when then what? Then we went back to, was at A3, sat there for a while. Then I went back to Kung Ha, did some uh, convoy escorts. From Dong Ha to where? To, up to the DMZ, to Jalin and to Kantian. And then my tour was up and I went home. That's like, that's like three months. It was six months. Oh, you went over there six months? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you were a two year guy? Yeah. Oh. Oh, so you got out in two years. Yeah. Oh. I had originally, before I got I wounded. They sent you there in six months left in your tour. Your because I had didn't have a college shirt. Yeah, yeah. And what I found out later when I had dinner with Bob Ambezi and a lot of the old timers, that was a standard procedure back then. The MPs were told to write everybody up because they asked Bob, well, what the f did you send me? I was like skating. Yeah, yeah. And he, the one of the guys goes, no, the, you got rid of by the MPs. I go, yeah. Well, what they would do, rather than have to pick somebody, the MPs had orders to write up everything submitted to command. So the command would go, oh, I got to pick somebody. You got in trouble. I guess it made it easier on them. Whoa, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Six months to our yeah. And you got out when you got home. Well, actually, I was going to stay in. Before I got wounded, I had talked to the recruitment officer and he offered me another stripe. My deal was for early ammunition depot or uh, embassy duty. And he goes, we well, can't give you both. And I said, no, I, I want to back up in case I don't pack. Something happens, I don't get embassy duty. And so he says, comes back, he says, okay, you got your deal. You get a stripe, you got to do another tour of Nam. E5. Yeah, E5. And, and I said, okay, so I went out and I got, the mortar went off and I got all metal in my back and everything. And when I came back, I said, no, I'm going home. This guy doesn't want me here. So I left on my rotation. 
So, so I mean, for all intents and purposes, you had one op. Right. And wow, I didn't realize that. I thought I thought you were a salt, and and you'd been there longer. And yeah, wow. So when did you go home? What month? I went home in July. Of sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Huh. How about that? Um, so you spent most of your time at Camp Pendleton. Correct. Training. Right. Okay. Huh. How about that? So you remember any of the guys that were over there? And any have you have you have you thought about any of the guys, or have you been able to reunite with anybody? Or? No, other than you, nobody. I, I can't remember anybody. How about that? Huh. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the Alpha guys that that would have been there with us at the same time. I mean, Jim Cullen. Did you, yeah. did you ever did you ever see him? No. You must have been at Contian before he got there. And I can't remember, that uh, Laurent Lawson? I wouldn't remember a name if it came and hit me in the head. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So what else do you want to talk about? That's it, I guess. Wow, I don't know. that's a pretty short and sweet. I didn't realize, I did not realize that you were only there six months. Yeah. I, I My enlistment was, I was... Two years, boom, you died. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I shipped over a year to get Yeah, I know. You shipped over a year. I didn't Sorry. ship over anything. Yeah, I was straight yeah. to tanks. Yeah, you got to tanks. I, went, I, I enlisted with four friends. Yeah. What did they do? Uh, let's see. Walt went to Amtrak's. I went to tanks. Phil went to Moda T. And Carl went to the airway. Do you know those guys now? Yeah. I still so, keep still in touch buddies? with Yeah, we're still all buddies. Okay. And the Amtrak's guy, did he make it okay? And yeah. Did he, all 12, did he have 12 months and 29 days? In Vietnam? I don't know. I met him when he was rotating back. I met all of them in Nam, okay. either coming back or going. But they're from home. They're from. We all listed together from Jersey. And you had and, and the first time you saw him after you enlisted was in Vietnam. Well, I saw him in boot camp, but uh, after because uh, that was that buddy yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after boot camp, no, I met them all up either in Vietnam or home, get, just getting home. Right. How about that? And you still see them? Still see them. They all good guys. Yeah. Yeah. I still. Walt is a retired captain on a Raleigh Police Department. Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. And does he talk a lot less now? Yeah. No, he talks pretty normal for a Jersey, Jersey guy. Yeah, yeah. So, Phil, I will see him when I go to Jersey. He's a retired plumber. Carl was a uh, Plainfield police officer. Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah. And he retired? Yeah, retired. Okay, so three of you were cops. Yeah. How about that? All three of us were cops. That's pretty cool. So. Huh. So do you, uh, do you have any uh, reoccurring things that you think about with Vietnam? Like oh, over and over and over? Well, I, I still go through the whole incident where they were hacking up the guy and where I got wounded. And, and you got shrapnel? Yeah. And from the from the incoming. Well, I had a when I was up. I had a they were dropping mortars on us, and I had a mortar go right off on the back of the tank, the engine compartment. On, on the yeah, the uh, what do they call that armor plate? Right on the armor plate on the engine compartment. And you caught you caught shot. Right. And where did you get it? The back of the head. No, I got it all through my arm. They found some just recently here that I didn't even know I had when I had an MRI, and so I got it all all in the back and on this side. And, and they medevac you? Oh no, you said no. they didn't medevac you. No. They just they just patch you up. They just patched me up. But you got a heart out of it. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody else in your crew get wounded? No. I was the only dumb one with my head up. Everybody else was locked right. in. Right, right, right. Had you shot the ninety? Yeah. Into the village? Yeah. Okay. Okay. At the sniper? No, at the whole group of NVA that was there. Oh, oh, there were in the Yeah, there was, was, yeah, oh, they were fighting oh, okay. us. Okay. Yeah, we tried to take the tree line and they fought like, like. The Dickens. The Dickens. And this was south of Gila. Right. Okay. The little village. Uh, the, near the sand, sand dunes? Right, it was by the sand dunes. Okay. And okay. fact, being not knowing much, but now that I know what really happened, after we took the village, I'm out there with my guys and I see all this cable wire. I go, why is there cut cable wire? Well, now I know why. Probably half them guys were tied into their machine guns and stuff. But at the time, it didn't make any sense why I saw all this wire 
just laying around. So when the op was over, did you go in, did they count bodies and yada, yeah. yada, yada? Yeah. Okay, okay. And they get a lot of weapons? Yeah. And the Arvin got credit for all that? I'm sure, I don't know who got credit. So I'm sure they, they did. There weren't any American Marines with you. The oh, yeah, the, yeah, the second, second day when we finally gotcha. took the village, gotcha. there were Marines. Do you remember who, who, what outfit that was? I have no yeah, idea. That's, that's very typical. You know, no idea who yeah. the run, run outfit no. was. Yeah. Now I can tell you about my tour down to the R and R Center. Why not? Well, I'm up in the DMZ, and they tell me I got R and R. I got to chick catch the next chopper out. You got R and R. You got to get back here. You got to be to Dung Ha tonight. And I'm going. Oh my God! Oh, how am I going to? Okay, so I get a chopper out because I had learned how to work the choppers to go back and get stuff while we were up there for my guys, while the grunts didn't have anything. I was coming back with sea rations and beer. But if I would have missed the chopper, I'd be in trouble. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, and I had to get the chopper out. Well, that morning, I go down there to get on a chopper. And you must remember the dance they used to do with the artillery. The chopper come in, the north would fire the guns, the chopper take off, the rounds would land, and it'd be like a dance. Well, this stupid idiot guy is waiting to get on the chopper, and we hear the guns go off, so we go in this little bunker they had. He stands in the doorway, so boom, he gets his ass blown away. I mean, he's dead. And so some staff NCO goes, put him in a bag, and he gets on the chopper first. And I'm going, fuck, because it's just that dance of incoming and all. So we had to throw the dead body on, the chopper took off, and then it came in, and we had to get on again. So I grab my stuff, they tell me, and I think somebody else, I can't remember who, but I met a guy somewhere, another Marine, to get down to Da Nang, and get our uniforms on down there. So I go to the R&R Center. Now I'm just coming out of the, the DMZ for weeks at a time. I'm scruffy, so I walk up to the R&R Center, the, MP there goes, you're not allowed to come in the art center. Like I said, excuse me, we just came out of the DMZ. I didn't have, they told me I didn't have time to get a uniform. Okay, come in. I go, ah, fuck this. So we go walking around Da Nang, and we go up to some mess hall, and everybody's looking at us. I said, let's go eat this. Scruffy. Scruffy, yeah. So let's go eat in this cafeteria, whatever it is up there, or whatever it is. So we go, real nice, and people, and I'm walking along, and I hear my name called out. And I'm going, who the hell's that? And the guy stops on top of a deuce and a half. It's a kid I was in high school with. He goes, what are you doing here? He said, get on here. So he, It's the Motor T guy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not my buddy Phil. It's just oh, some other guy from guys. high school. Okay, so he goes, it's up on the truck. We'll go get something. So I'm, afterwards, he's, well, I got to get back to what I'm doing. Drops us off by there in Iron Center. And then... It's getting dark by now, and I'm going, you know what? We don't want to be out here in the dark. And the MP goes, he's only a private, so he goes, sorry, Corporal, I can't let you in. I go, I think I friggin' outrank you. I said, call the officer of the day, because I ain't getting caught out of here, no gun, no nothing, and not knowing if I'm inside a safe zone or not. He goes, well, I can't. so the officer of the day finally calls him, and he goes, I'm not allowed to let you guys in. I says, sir, we just freaking flew out of the DMZ. He goes, well, if you run right up there, take a shower and put it. I said, we've been asking to do that since 10 o'clock in the morning. It's not like we want to walk around like this. So he goes, oh, okay. So report to me as soon as you're done now. So I know you. I go, sir, we're going to be. So we get, yeah, got our uniforms and. Got in there and got washed so, up. So you had you had some traps, or right? Something had traps, or, or, yeah. Or, or khakis or something. A trap, traps okay. or khaki. It was okay. a brown okay. uniform. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we finally get cleaned up, and he goes, "Oh, I'm glad. I would have been in trouble." I'm going. Only the Marine Corps would send you down and tell you you're too dirty to go in the R and R Center. So. So then, then you got the R and R Center. Yeah, got the R and R Center. Then I went on R and R. You missed your R and R flight. No. Oh, I wasn't missing my own right. RFI. Okay, and where'd you go? Taipei, Taiwan. And? Oh, I'm not going to even discuss that. Well, you got to <laughs> Taipei and you had a good time. I had a good time. I enjoyed myself. And you went with another fellow? 
Well, I went with another Marine, and then we hooked up with two Air Force guys, and we had a room in some hotel, the Imperial Hotel or Capitol Hotel, something like that. Uh -huh. Then so, then we went to the bar, met a couple of girls. Then the girls want to go to the uh, some NCO club. Well, we didn't care. They had steak, steak and drinks. So we went to this this uh, military club. And they had a show, and so I spent four days there. And, and drinks. Drinks. And a and show. More. And a show. Cool. And four days later. Four days later, I had a report back to the airfield. Did you have the right uniform? Right uniform. Okay. And then they're going through it to make sure nobody's got booze, nobody's got that. And then they're going through the names. They were missing one guy, I guess. He took off first day at his hotel, it was his last day. So, went whatever. Back to the States, you think? What? They went back to the States, you think? Uh, if he could, I don't know how he could get back to the States, but. On an airplane? Yeah. But he didn't show up to get back, so. But they didn't hold the flight up? No, no. And then you went back to Vietnam? Vietnam. To Third Tank. To Third Tank. company. Right. And then you had like three weeks or four weeks or I went back up, so. back, I went back up to uh, A3. A3. And I had just missed, I guess there was some reports of helicopters coming in, but I never heard that. But when I got there, the guys would talk about it. But we did have some tanks at the, what, Benoit, Benha, whatever river it was. We could see them come down. and ben we've High. Ben High River, yeah. right. And they were actually coming down and we were able to fire on them. Helicopters? Or, no, no, the tanks. Enemy tanks were coming down, I guess, to wash it, do something at the river. Uh -huh. You could see their trails. Yeah, you know, everything oh, coming they down. Were still, they were still in the DMZ. They were still the in the DMZ. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. me and this this Marine on his recoilless rifle, and my crew fired at them until they told us we were expending too much ammunition. Did you get any secondaries? We got one secondary. Okay. Cool. Cool. So you probably got one kill. Anyway. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like two miles, I think. Yeah. 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 Huh. And that was from A three. Yeah, huh. and then one morning, my new kid on my crew says, I just saw some VC go into the, the uh, this uh, bomb crater that yeah. was outside the wire. Yeah. So I, I said, well, we'll put a gun on it. I called the guys in the observation post, and then I'm going, they say, we don't see nothing. I go, okay, I told the gunner, put everything on it. I was going to get something or going to crapper, going to the head, and the next thing you hear, poop, poof, the mortars. So we got in the tank and fired one round in there, and we asked permission to fire. They're going, no, you don't have permission to fire. And you hear, poof. I go, we're gonna fire. Oh, you can't, Finally, I just said, fuck it, boom. And that was the end of the mortars. That's at A3 again? Right. So you spent most of your time at A3? Yeah. Which probably three months later, they deactivated mm -hmm. the base and left the barbed wire and knocked down all the bunkers and it wasn't a, bunk it wasn't a, a fire base anymore. Yeah. It was amazing how they do stuff like that. But well, why it was at A3, we heard, tra I mean, I know what a track sounds like. There mm -hmm. were tracks running out, you could hear them in the DMZ. So I called to the guys who was, take the phone and call up to the guys in that little tower there. Mm -hmm. And I said, I hear a tracked vehicle out there. And they're going, ah, there's nothing out there. So I'm going, I hear, so I called back on the radio and I said, I got tracks. And they go, hey, it can't be no tracked vehicle. I'm going, you can hear the squeak, squeak, squeak. And I'm going, there's something moving out there. Do we have any units in there? I thought maybe it was units I didn't know right. about. Right. And I said, I ain't going to fire on anything or even guess. And, no, 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 nothing's going on. And they keep telling me, I said, I saw, I'm calling in where it, where it is, had my map out. As this is approximate location. They're going, can you see anything? I go, no, but I can hear it. You can't miss it. And every time I'd radio it in, it would stop for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, Cat I'm, and mouse. Yeah. yeah. So every time it started up, I get on the radio. 
you know, can I get a fire mission? Can I get something at this? Or do we have any units? Harvard, no, no units, but there's no track vehicles operating. Well, that night, for the whole night, Puff was operating around A3. They were dropping flares all night, so obviously there was something going on because Puff was up all night, mm -hmm. and they had us lit up all night. Mm -hmm. you know. But didn't see anything. No. Amazing. I guess they found um, up in the up in the Ho Chi Minh Trail when they went over to Cambodia and Laos and whatever. Um, they found a bunch of. I think they called them prime movers, and there were tracks. They were to move um, already. Right. So there were, <coughs> they're kind of like the, um, remember that engineer vehicle they had that, um, I think called an otter? Yeah. Yeah, it was track vehicle. So kind of like a, a non-firing Antos kind of thing, but that's what they, they found some of those. Because nobody ever, uh, there was lots of noise, you could hear tanks, but nobody ever saw any along the DMZ. Yeah. So they probably were too afraid to come down there, you know, to get knocked out of the way. Yeah. Well, I don't think they were afraid, but, <coughs> yeah whatever so so yeah it's a lot of my time was at a3 was there any other tanks at a3 yeah you remember which ones I think there was another tank but I don't remember who he was uh -huh. and I think uh -huh. the tank commander's name was after one of the little rascals spanky or something like that okay nickname nickname yeah 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 yeah, yeah. A, a, a lot of non vets that I know they have now. They're trying to find you guys, and all they have are nicknames. You know, yeah. like the bones and, and pineapple and cheap and yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, we we got sent out a three one night. There was this little finger that went out, yeah. and they had barbed wire around it, but it wasn't manned, and they had the perimeter back here. So they tell us one day, me and this this guy Rat, who ran the recoilless rifle on the mule, with the grunts. They tell my crew and his crew to go sit out on the finger out there. And they said, we're gonna have run an operation through Hill 41, push the VC off it, and you're to take them out in the valley. I'm going, and Rat is going, this don't sound right. And I'm going, it doesn't sound right to me because I don't see nobody mounting up to head out, but maybe they got another unit coming in from someplace. So we go out there, we set up in the, the valley there that they're supposed to push him into. And we're waiting, and we're waiting. And Rat goes, well, you know, I go, you know, I think we're the bat, in the, I think we're the mouse in the bait. The bait. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I say, yeah, because we just sat out there and there was, they never had an operation taking that hill. But you could have been, you could have been attacked. Yeah. Because you were the bait. Yeah.